Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you having a fantastic Wednesday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're going to talk about today, by far one of the most requested stories today, is the story around 18-year-old Ariadna Juarez. She's a beauty guru from Dallas, Texas, and she's in the news today because of a reported relationship she has had with a 13-year-old Instagram star. In this situation, and I say situation because it just feels wrong to say relationship, this situation first faced criticism because earlier this summer, fans saw several photos and videos of them together. It seemed like maybe they were dating, there were photos and videos of them kissing, and apparently the criticism got to such a level that Juarez decided she needed to speak on this. And she uploaded a video titled Speaking Up About Our Controversial Relationship, and to make it extra special, in the now deleted video, Juarez appears on screen with the boy's mother. And when talking about this video, we're kind of going to jump around the video because a lot of it doesn't make sense and seemingly contradicts other parts. And so one of the first things is she issues a denial. First and foremost, I want to say that me and him were never in a relationship we never dated. We never got to the point to even date, so what makes you think we got to the point of having sexual relationships? Which is strange because then she also talks about the differences between dating and having a sexual relationship. And just to clear things up, dating does not mean having sexual intercourse. So you cannot say people were having sex just because they were dating. There's so, I feel like there's so much more to dating than just sexual relationships. Also saying they talked to a lawyer about the legality. When we spoke to the lawyer, they told us that there's nothing wrong with dating. Dating can mean just coming over to have dinner with the family. And, but there is obviously issues if it gets to any type of sexual contact. So essentially she says she spoke to a lawyer about the legality of them dating even though they're definitely not dating or in a relationship and then seemingly giving the legal defense of why it would be okay to be dating. Then, even though they were never in a relationship, they weren't dating, she starts talking about maturity levels. Mother also agrees with this point. Now, as far as the maturity level of a person, obviously is not determined by age because it, I'm, in my opinion, I feel like your experiences are what make your maturity level. So you cannot say that a person who is 13 is going to have the same mentality as another 13 year old that has been through more stuff at the same age in the same years. For y'all to know, like, has never acted his age. Ever since he was like really young, he's acted more mature than what he really is. Then also, even though she says there's no relationship or no dating, uh, the boy decided he could not continue with this. That he decided that he didn't want to continue with this because he didn't want me to be so harmed because he saw all the negativity we were getting, the way people were attacking me, and he decided to put me before himself. And then Juarez says this. It's sad to know that we have to put, like, it's sad to know that we have to put our love aside just because people don't want to see us together and because people are ignorant. And it's just sickening to see how people don't, just don't want to see you happy without knowing anything about you. She also talks about something she finds so stupid about this situation. It's stupid to think that if I was one year younger or if he was one year older, it would make such a big difference and people would be more accepting of it. Also reportedly saying during the video, you can love the same person today, tomorrow, next year, or three years later. For that same reason, we decided we're gonna wait and we are gonna try this again when everybody will be okay with it. But to her note that a one year difference would, would be completely different, not in Texas, right? You're 18, he's 13, the age of consent in Texas is 17. And even if there was a one year difference, if something happened, that's still illegal. And as far as why Juarez and the boy his mother think that this is even a thing. Apparently it's just because of that dang social media. Just to see that people are just like talking about them or posting about them just, you know, to get followers or to get likes or to, you know, even get clout or how you call it. And the mother specifically thinks we should be talking about more important things. Or maybe uh, using your time instead of making 10 different calls, as you said. Um, people with people that really need your help, like there may be girls out there getting raped by their parent and you know, nobody's out there doing nothing. So there's kids you can getting use beat, time. there's people getting killed every day and you're over here dealing, you're over here worrying about people that just want to be happy, just like you. There's a lot to unpack here. No, Ariadna, no, our pursuits of happiness are not similar. Your pursuit for happiness, in my opinion, appears to be at the very least the grooming of a 13 year old. And I say at the very least because despite what you said in your video about dating and relationships, and I think trying to hide behind certain words, it does appear that there's photographic and video evidence of you being very uh, close. Also, how do you contradict yourself so much in a video with so many many jump cuts. It's not like you got caught on a live stream and you couldn't keep your story together and it all unraveled. You shot this, cut this, and put this out on the internet. Granted, I mean, there's no part of this video that makes me think that you are a mastermind, but it's just, it's just 
Common sense. Like, bottom of the barrel common sense. Also, their argument that there are other horrible things happening in the world, why aren't we focusing on that? Because we're focusing on your horrible right now. Tomorrow still exists to talk about that other thing, and because other horrible things happen, does it negate your horrible? Also, regarding the argument that the only reason people are talking about this is because you are someone on social media and people are just trying to get followers. One, yes, people are talking about this because you are a person that has a following, thus more eyes are on you so people can see. And as far as people talking about this to try and get more followers, I cannot speak to the intent of everyone else. What I would personally say is that by talking about this situation online, casting a light on it, more people end up talking about it, that usually ends in something being done. One of the most recent examples of that would be, of course, Mike and Heather Martin, Daddy of Five, then Family of Five. Had people not talked about this more and more online, and then other outlets picked it up and talked about it, law enforcement might not have ever gotten involved. Without that, the people who were held accountable may not have been. Without that, those two kids that seemed to be in so much distress would have been in the same place. And actually, there are other similarities to the Daddy of Five story. One, the audiences for these people, even while they were in their controversy, were incredibly supportive. The video's garnering tons of likes. And two, had it not been for some smaller channels talking about this, I would not have seen it to be able to cast my light on it. And actually, on that note, quick shout out to Reagan Wolf, as well as Mr. GG, both here on YouTube. One of the other reasons I'm personally talking about this story is this sort of behavior should not be normalized. We're not talking about a 21 year old and a 26 year old. We are talking about an 18 year old and a child. Just because the mother is joining in on these mental gymnastics does not make this behavior okay. And I feel like one of the main reasons that this story has not blown up to the point where it should be right now is because for some, there is a general double standard when it comes to men and women. Right, you have a lot of people, and I would say I was in this camp for a while too, where you see male teacher has sex or does something something sexual with a 13 year old student, you're like, monster, disgusting, throw him into a fire. And then you see a story where the genders were swapped, where you have female teacher and a 13 year old male student. And a lot of the responses to that would be nice. Even, even South Park joked about it. Good for him. Where were those teachers when I was in school? But in both situations, you were talking about a minor, a child whose brain is not fully developed. But as far as where we are with this story right now, uh, one, her Instagram is now private. Two, her YouTube is just gone. And three, I personally hope that the authorities get involved here, especially with a mother that seems to be enabling this situation. But of course, that is the story. That is my personal takeaway. And I'll pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts around this? Any and all opinions, let me know in those comments down below. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today. And today in Awesome, brought to you by Postmates. And Postmates, if you don't know, is the fantastic delivery on demand app. You want something from the store, your favorite restaurant, boom, just open up the app. They'll deliver to your house, your work, your wherever. It's the ultimate convenience. It allows you to do so much more with your time or or, you know, some days, nothing with it. And honestly, that's even sometimes more important. And there's two awesome things here. One, go to postafranco.com, download the Postmates app, and enter in offer code Philly D, and they'll give you $100 in free delivery credit. And two, if you've been wanting to use the service, but previously it hasn't been available, just recently they launched in 100 new cities, so go check it out. And the first bit of awesome today is we had Ted Ed asking, can you solve the rogue AI riddle? Then we had Ruby Rose trying nine things she's never done before. We got the Deadpool 2, how it should have ended, written by fans. Then we had Lies Akoshi recreating stock photos. We got the Honest trailer for Deep Blue Sea. Then we got a video from Gus Johnson. Uh, it's about Movie Pass. If you are even slightly aware of what's happening, recommend it. Then we got whatever the hell that trailer was for Kidding, the new Jim Carrey Showtime series. And if you want to see the full versions of everything, I just shared the secret link of the day. Really anything at all. Links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about the update around the IGN plagiarism story we covered yesterday. And if you missed that, quick little summary, IGN released a review for the new game Dead Cells. Following that, a small YouTube channel by the name of Boomstick Gaming releases a video saying, hey, IGN just copied me here. Also providing back-to-back -back examples which we featured yesterday. IGN then took down their post saying they were investigating it, and the big update was Philip Mewson, the IGN editor who put out his review on Dead Cells, was fired. IGN releasing their official statement saying, We've reviewed the allegations against one of our writers regarding our review of Dead Cells. After taking the time to investigate, we've determined that there were substantial similarities between a review posted weeks earlier and our review that could not be justified and warranted taking down. Though we as a community often share feelings and even certain word choices to describe the games we love by using similar frames of understanding, this particular situation stepped over the line and is not a reflection 
violation of our editorial standards. We apologize to our readers, developer Motion Twin, and most especially the YouTuber known under Boomstick Gaming for failing to uphold those standards. Adding, though our Dead Cells reviewer played the game and came away with glowing opinions of it, as did many of our other staff members, the review itself was simply not acceptable. We've parted ways with the writer involved in the review, and we will be re-reviewing Dead Cells this week. And as far as what happens next for the now-fired writer Philip Mewson, I don't know. As an update to the story, you had outlets like Kotaku pointing out that this might not be the only time Mewson did this. People pointing to a review of FIFA 18 on the Switch before he was a part of IGN. Rather than deep diving into that specific thing from 2017, I'll just link to the article. It's not like he can be double-fired at this point. IGN has made their move. As far as Philip Mewson's response to all of this, there, there really hasn't been any. On his Twitter, his description still reads, Nintendo editor at IGN. His last two tweets are hyping up and then linking to his Dead Cells review. And in those tweets, while we don't know the complete workflow around what goes into a review as far as IGN and who it has to pass, interesting note in those tweets is that he wrote, it's the first IGN video review I've edited myself. So maybe it's the case that there weren't a lot of other people involved in this for checks and balances. So maybe that explains how this was able to pass. But either way, this most likely will be held against or used against IGN moving forward. And so I guess the main point of this story is something, 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 ethics and gaming journalism? And then we had Marcus Meachin, AKA Count Dankula back in the news. And we've been talking about Marcus on and off again since 2016 when he first released the video, Mate, your Doug's a Nazi. A satirical video that he says he initially thought would only be viewed by friends, where to ruin his beloved girlfriend's dog, he would train it to become the most disgusting thing in the world, a Nazi. And so in the video, you see the dog watching Hitler. You see the dog putting up a paw, which, oh my gosh, also looks like a Sieg Hale. The dog also then appears to be excited when he says, gas the Jews. And that led to this whole situation where he was arrested for allegedly committing a hate crime. The trial ends up getting postponed in 2016, 2017, part of 2018. At one point, the prosecution even tries to get harsher charges. So instead of a one year prison sentence, he could get five years. And as you might remember where this story ultimately ended up is that Marcus Meachin ended up being found guilty, specifically of committing a crime under the UK's Communications Act 2003 for sending by means of a public electronic communications network a message or other matter that is grossly offensive or of an indecent, obscene, or menacing character. And when Meachin was sentenced, he was not given a prison sentence, but rather was just fined 800 pounds. And following his sentencing, Meachin said that even though he didn't get prison time, he was still going to appeal. He also started a GoFundMe with a goal of 100,000 pounds. And as of today, over 193,000 pounds was raised. But with all of that said, the big update to the story today is Meachin announced yesterday that the appeal was rejected. And in his announcement video, he explains that in Scottish Appeals Court, you get two chances to submit your appeal and it can be rejected at that point as he explains. It was to stop, you know, people that had no chance in hell from uh, wasting the time of appeal courts. He said his appeal was rejected at both stages and he even shared images of the first rejection letter on Twitter. And I'm going to read a chunk of that rejection letter because, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. And also, while what you'll be seeing visually as I read this will just be the words. Imagine the person saying this is wearing a wig and robe. Likewise, the appeal against sentence is not arguable. This was a deep, unpleasant offense in which disgraceful and utterly offensive material was very widely distributed by the appellant. This was to the considerable distress of the community in question and just as disturbingly to the apparent approval of a large number of persons who appear to share the appellant's racist views. Indeed, it must be observed that in the circumstances the appellant was fortunate that the learned sheriff was not considering custody as an option. I also refer to the sheriff's report at paragraph 83 where he deals with the plea and mitigation. He charitably describes this as unusual. On my reading, it appears to be wholly improper. It involved an attack upon my bona fides of the police and prosecution, an apparent refusal by an officer of the court to accept the verdict of that court, an apparent attempt to intimidate the court in the sentencing process by reference to a publicly funded appeal, expressions of personal views on the outcome by the solicitor whose professional duty was cleared confined to submission in fact and law, and an apparently enthusiastic endorsement of the appellant's defiance. For an officer of the court to engage in such behavior is at best unprofessional and improper and would certainly merit a professional complaint. Indeed, for my part, I consider the solicitor was fortunate not to himself require representation on the matter of contempt. So not only was the repeal rejected, the general response was, you got off lucky. And also, your lawyer should be charged with contempt. So I guess you could kind of call it a, a hard no. Now as far as what's next for Meachin, he says that there are other steps his lawyer plans on taking, but as of right now, he's not going to publicly discuss those. Although one thing he did mention is that his lawyers will submit a miscarriage of justice complaint to the Scottish Criminal Cases Review Commission. That in hopes that they agree to ask the appeal court to accept his case. But the thing is, there is actually still a possibility that Marcus Meachin may go to jail. As he explains, he still has this fine that he is supposed to pay. He has until October 26 to pay it, but he explained he does not plan on paying it. And here he is explaining this in a little more detail. I'm not 
not going to pay the fine, so I'm going to get a letter from the court round about that time asking me to appear in court again so that they can ask me why I haven't paid the fine. At which point I'm going to tell them that I am not paying the fine because I am not a criminal, I have done nothing wrong, at which point the judge is either going to increase the fine or give me community service or something along those lines. At which point I am going to reject it and say I'm not going to do those either. <laughs> which means that one of two things are going to happen. Either he is going to give me that punishment anyway and I'm still not going to do it, which means once the time threshold for that finishes I'll get another letter from the court asking me to reappear back or he is just going to jail me there and then, right away. So, <laughs> whether so whether we like it or not, boys, I'm going to jail. And Meechan explains that really the only likely way that he will avoid jail is if the other actions his attorneys are taking end up being successful. And so that's where the situation is right now. And as far as where I stand on this, as far as the actual charges and punishment, all of that, I, I personally think it's all bullshit. I feel like the context of what he put out was completely ignored. His video in question is a ludicrous satirical video, who's, which the whole point of the video is that Nazis are actually bad. Which you could argue, well, many were still offended by it, to which I would respond, and that should not be illegal. And so that's why I am personally glad that Marcus Meachin has been fighting this, but also the, the place that I end up being torn, I don't know if it's worth him going to jail over to make this point, right? As of now, he has gone out of this situation with just a fine. Is it worth jail? And I think you could argue both points. If he pays for it, he can still argue that he doesn't think it was right, and he's out there there in the real world, he's free. Free to rail against these bad laws. Whereas if this gets to the end of the road, he has to go to jail. Obviously it's a massive downside. But at the same time, if the government decides that he should go to jail, does that not make him a living free speech martyr? He keeps the story and issue alive, an issue that even in the mainstream, we saw people concerned about it, speaking out about it. Of course, Ricky Gervais spoke on it. And overall, I mean, if we're thinking about it from an analytical sense, Marcus Meachin's stock skyrockets. And so that part, I'm still actually debating in my head and where I'll pass the question off to you. One, if you haven't talked about it already, what do you think about the charges and the conviction? And two, what do you think Marcus Meachin should do here? Should he just pay the fine and be done with it? Or no, continue to kind of move forward as he's been doing? And that's where today's show ends. And of course, remember, with this being the Philip DeFranco show, it is also a conversation. So whether it's the last story, the first one, anything in between, let me know what you're thinking in those comments down below. And hey, while you're at it, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.